Welcome back to America Decides. Ukrainian President Zelensky will be in Washington tomorrow with meetings with President Biden and Vice President Harris on his schedule, also meeting probably with some lawmakers. All this after he addressed the General Assembly today. Here's a bit of what President Zelensky said. It not only ignores reality, but also gives Putin the political space to continue the war and pressure the world to bring more nations under control. Any parallel or alternative attempts to seek peace are, in fact, efforts to achieve a lull instead of an end to the war. Arweja Jang is covering the General Assembly. Earlier today, she spoke to the leader of one of NATO's newest member countries, Finland, and President Alexander Stubb. Let's listen. First, I want to ask you, since Finland joined NATO, do your people feel safer? How has the level of reassurance changed? Well, we do feel safer, but the truth is that we also have a very strong defense ourselves, and that's why we became NATO members extremely fast. We have one of the largest militaries in Europe, and I think NATO wanted us because if you double your border with Russia, it's better to have a country that is quite serious about its defense. We feel very secure and safe, no problem. What can you tell us about the two NATO bases that are reportedly uh, in Finland? Well, what we're trying to do right now is to integrate ourselves into NATO. And that means that, first of all, we are under Norfolk, together with the other Nordic countries. And then we have two components. One is a land component, and the other one are these FLFs, Forward Land Forces. Uh, and we haven't decided yet where they're going to go, but we're talking more on a rotational basis. So we're not talking about a base with 5,000 soldiers. Uh, we are talking, you know, of tens of, of officers. And then we look at it, how it is structured within the next year or two. Obviously, uh, we heard from President Zelensky today. He continues to call for NATO allies to support his request to use long-range missiles deeper into Russia. You agree with him that that is the right approach. What is your message to President Biden, who has so far been resistant? My message to all of our allies is to allow, Ru allow Ukraine to fight this war against Russia with both hands. Now it has one hand behind its back. Finland has absolutely no restrictions on what kind of weapons and which range uh, Ukraine can use in Russia, as long as two things are met. It's for defense purposes and it is within the framework of international law. So I am actually quite hopeful that when Zelensky presents his victory plan to President Joe Biden tomorrow, there should be hopefully some news uh, that gives uh, a little bit alleviation to the way in which Ukraine is fighting the war. Have you personally had a conversation with President Biden about that? Uh, I haven't about this, no. I've talked with him about many other things, but I did speak about this particular issue uh, with uh, both uh, Zelensky and in passing with uh, Foreign Secretary, Secretary of State uh, Blinken. And then finally, just today, President Biden, um, during an interview, warned that if the former president, Donald Trump, were to win in November, that would be the end of NATO. Do you agree with that? Well, I don't take issue in the American elections. I am in no position to do that. And I, as president of Finland, will get along with whichever president is elected for the United States. I do believe that the United States will stay committed to NATO and to Europe, because if it wants to retain its position, maintain its position as a superpower, it needs allies, and 32 of those allies are in NATO. But you have heard what the former president has said before about NATO. Do you take any of it, you know, seriously? Well, I take at least one thing very seriously, uh, and that is uh, defense expenditure. And I think he's been right on that. So he has, in many ways, with his language, which is quite rough at times, uh, forced a lot of the allies to increase their defense um, spending up to 2%. Remember that in 2014, there were only three allies that reached that goal. Now we're 23. So on that particular issue, I think he's right. Uh, and I hope that were he to be elected again, uh, he would see the benefit uh, of the alliance, not least in keeping Europe secure and also with his ambitions that he might have in uh, the Pacific. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank Appreciate you. your time.